Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello friends, in the last week lecture we mainly focused on longitudinal static stability and how your wing and tail contributed to pitching moment. We saw what were the parameters in order to design your fuselage, what were the parameters in order to design your control surface. Today's lecture will be focusing on the same topic, we will be looking at an example and that will make a better understanding of what we learned in the previous week. But before that, I want to focus on how an airfoil gives us information regarding your design process or what are the information we get or how to choose an airfoil. This will be, we will be looking at first. So, first topic will be how to select an airfoil or what are the information we will get from an airfoil. Now, big companies like Boeing or Airbus, they basically go for their own design of airfoil, but for our initial phase, we will be looking at a database of huge airfoil which is available and what are the information we get from that. The first graph which we will be looking is CL versus alpha graph. Now, for a symmetrical airfoil, the graph versus graph for CL versus alpha is like this, that is this passes through origin, whereas for a cambered airfoil, your CL versus alpha graph will be like this. And what are all the information we get from this graph is your maximum value of CL, this is CL max, your stall angle, alpha stall, your angle of attack at 0 lift and what is the value of C L at 0 angle of attack. These are the information which we get from C L versus alpha graph. Now, the second graph which I will be focusing on is C D versus alpha drag coefficient versus angle of attack or in some cases instead of C L C D versus alpha, you will get to see C L versus C D graph. C L, C D, now this is in the shape of a bucket and what is the significance of this is for a particular range of alpha or in this case in particular range of C L, you can see the value of C D does not change. So, in from a design perspect, this is beneficial for, for me because if I operate in this particular range, my drag would not be significant or drag will remain constant. Now, apart from these two graphs, the third graph which I will be looking is your C m at C by 4 versus alpha graph. for an airfoil, for an airfoil you will, you will see a graph C m at quarter chord versus angle of attack and you will see it will vary a lot. This is for if in case of a symmetrical airfoil, you will see that C m C by 4 is very close to 0. But for cambered airfoil, this will be much much lower than your 0, it will be in negatives, negative values, something like this. So, from this I can get the value of CMAC. So, these are the three main graphs which are helpful in order to go forward with my design process. 
because your wing as well as tail will be using some sort of airfoil either symmetrical or it will be cambered and these are the parameters required in order to go for a good design. Now to summarize what all the information we got from this are, first camber of an airfoil CL optimum or we can see this, this is your CL optimum, this is your CL optimum because for this particular range your drive would not change or it will remain constant. For camber with camber of an air, uh, camber of airfoil CL optimum and CMAC varies that is with increase in camber, camber, increase of camber, your angle of attack at zero lift increases and CMAC will be more negative. Second point, thickness of an airfoil thickness of airfoil, your CD minimum changes, that is CD minimum increases with T by C value. Third point, with Reynolds number, CL max increases and CD min decreases. And fourth point, surface roughness influences your CD, CD min and CL max. These are the points we have to take into account when we look in an airfoil. Now there are different type of airfoils present. There are different series of airfoils and some of them are your Naka four digit series, Naka five digit series. Naka six digit series, then there are some Epler series and each of these airfoils are followed by some numbers. For instance, Naka six six two zero one five and these number have significance. For instance, this first digit represents series number that is sixth. Your second digit represents called wise position of minimum pressure 
in tenth of chord that is minimum pressure is at at 0 0.6 at x by c equals to 0 0.6. Now, this small 2, this third digit, this represents your drag bucket extends plus minus 0 0.2 around C L optimum. And this last two digit 1515, this fourth and fifth, fifth and sixth sorry, fifth and sixth, this represents your thickness. This is the information which we get from a particular series of air foil. These are the, uh, what this series number tells us is this thing and what are the plot or what are the information we get from plot we have already seen a few minutes before. After air foil design, we will be looking at some wing parameters. For instance, how do we choose your aspect ratio? So, effect of aspect ratio. ratio. First effect of aspect ratio on slope of lift curve, lift curve. We have already seen for a airfoil we know what is the value of C L alpha, some value say k. In order to transform this C L alpha to 3 D, we use formula C L alpha equals to C L alpha, this is for air foil divided by 1 plus C L alpha air foil. by pi aspect ratio into E. So, you can see as you change your aspect ratio, the value of lift slope curve will also change. Second, effect of aspect ratio on induced drag. Now, induced drag is given by C d i equals to C l square by pi a 1 plus sigma, where this delta, this depends on your taper ratio, sweep and other geometrical features of an aircraft. Now, third, third is your structural weight. Now, we know that wing weight is proportional to a to the or aspect ratio to the power of b, where this b is in the range of 0 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.79. And we also know that as aspect ratio will increase, your wing span will also increase, since we know 
that v square upon s is aspect ratio. So, b will be root under aspect ratio into area. Now, wing span will increase. So, there will be more movement at this root, more wing span, more will be in the bending moment about this root. As a result, your spars will have to encounter more bending force or more weight. That is why structure weight uh, aspect ratio highly affects your structure weight. And point D is aspect ratio effect on span. As we have already seen that span is directly or uh, uh, span is proportional to root under aspect ratio. So, higher the aspect ratio more will be your span and rather than geometrical or aerodynamic features this will be the problem of storing. The higher aspect ratio, your wing span will be too large and you will have problem of storage and that sort of thing. So, these are the effect of aspect ratio on wing design. Now, we will be looking at the numerical based on the lecture we did on previous week. We saw what were the information we got from airfoil and what were the effect of aspect ratio on wing design. And now, we will be doing a numerical based on the lecture we just saw and the what we did in the previous week. So, we will be doing this for a small UAV. So, these are the information which we have for a UAV or specification of UAV are weight of UAV is 6 kg or wingspan is 2.5 meters, tail span is 0.8 meters, cruise speed or velocity is 18 meters per second. Now, airfoil details for wing airfoil is E197. For tail is Naka. 0009. As you know for tail we use symmetrical airfoil and it is desirable to use a cambered airfoil for wing. Some other informations which are for UAVs are wing root cord 0.3 0 meters tip cord 0 0.220 meters and sweep angle 5 degree for tail root cord is 0 0.200 tip cord is 0 0.150. Now, using this information, we have to design what will be the tail setting angle and what will be the tail arm, what will be the position of wing and tail airfoil. First of all, before starting, we have to look at the plot of this airfoil E197 and NACA 009 and we have to derive all the information required in order to proceed for design. So, once you look at a data for or plot for E197, you will have following information from that plot. C L max for E197 is 
angle of attack at zero lift is minus 2.75 degrees. Your slope C L alpha of air foil E 197 is 6.30 per radian. There the you will be getting in degrees you have to convert it into radian. Okay, similarly, for tail you will be getting C L alpha for Naka 0009 equals to 6.66 per radian. Second information we will get from C D versus alpha graph that is in what particular range of alpha should I operate in order to have my minimum drag range of alpha for minimum drag. And third C M at quarter chord versus alpha in order to get C M A C and for Eplar 197 CMAC is around minus 0 0.07. Now, second step involves calculation of wing and tail area. area. Now, for the wing it is mentioned that tip chord is 0 0.220 meters, your root chord is 0 0.330 meters. So, area will be using taking it as an trapezoid and span is mentioned as 2.5. So, this will be 2.5 by 2. Area will be half into sum of parallel sides into distance between them. Since this is a area of half wing, so multiply this by 2, you will get area of whole wing. So, this comes around 0 0.6875 meter square. Similarly, for tail area, CR was 0 0.2, C tip was 0 0.150 and span was 0 0.8 meters. So, area of tail will be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.150 into 0 0.8 by 2 equals to 0 0.14 meter square. Third step is to calculate aspect ratio. We know that aspect ratio is given by B square by S. We already know for wing is 2.5 meter and area we got S 0.6875, which gives me aspect ratio of 9.09. .09. Similarly, aspect ratio for tail is 0.8 whole square by 0 0.14, which is around 4.57. And in case of tail aspect ratio is usually between 4 and 5. 
step 4 is to calculate C L alpha for wing and tail and tail. The information which we got from airfoil is C L alpha for Eplar 197, slope was C L alpha for Naka 0009 was 6.66, this all are in per radian. Now, using the formula for conversion from 2D to 3D, C L alpha is given by C L alpha by 1 plus C L alpha pi aspect ratio into E. Here, E we are taking as 0 0.8, which is equal to 6.30 divided by 1, point 1 plus 6.30 by pi into 9.09 .09 into 0 0.8, 4.94 per radian and C L alpha for tail equals to 6.66 divided by 1 plus 6.66 by pi into 4.57 into 0 0.8, which will come around 4.21 per radian. Step 5, mean aerodynamic chord and aerodynamic center. In order to calculate mean aerodynamic chord, there are two ways. You can either use a geometrical method or you can use formula. Geometrical in geometrical method, you know what are the tip and root chords. This is your root chord, this is your tip chord. Measure this length and extend this join this length on tip side. Similarly, measure this length and extend this length on root chord C T. Join these two points and either join this center to this center or you can extend this line here also. This will be your C R this will be your C T and join these two lines. This will be your mean aerodynamic chord. This is geometrical method, but in case you do not want to work on geometrical method because sometimes the wings are too large, you cannot directly apply this. Go for a mathematical formula, which is C main equals to or mean aerodynamic chord equals to 2 by 3 root chord into 1 plus tau plus tau square divided by 1 plus tau, where tau is your taper ratio that is ratio of tip by ratio of chord. In our case, it is 0 0.220 by 0 0.330 which will be about 0 0.67. So, your mean dynamic chord will be 2 by 3 into root chord is 0 0.330 into 1 plus 0 0.67 plus 0 0.67 whole square by 1 plus 0 0.67, which will come about 0 
0.279 meters. Once you have calculated your mean anatomic chord, now you have to calculate aerodynamic center. Now, since in the question it is already given that you have a sweep of 5 degree, this is suppose some theta, then and this is your suppose mean anatomic chord, then distance from the root x and y from horizontal lie are given as x equals to b by 6 into 1 plus 2 tau by 1 plus tau and y is given as b by 6 1 plus 2 tau by 1 plus tau into tan of theta in degrees. So, in our case y will be 2.5 by 6 1 plus 2 into 0 0.67 by 1 plus 0 0.67 which will be into tan of 5 degrees, which will be equal to 0 0.051. As you know, for air dynamic center, we usually take C by 4 as your air dynamic center. In our case, C was 0 0.279. So, A C will be 0 0.279 by 4 equals to 0 0.0697. So, your aerodynamic center from this horizontal line will be at a distance of y plus c by 4 which is equal to 0 0.051 plus 0 0.0697, which is equal to 0 0.1207 meters. So, if this is your horizontal line and this was your root chord, which is 0 0.330 your air dynamic center from this point will be somewhere around 0 0.1207 meters. If you want to calculate x, you can calculate it will come 0 0.58. After all this calculation, you have determined what will be the location of AC from horizontal line or from your starting of your wing position. Now, after that step 6 will be to calculate C L trim or particular value of C L at which you want to operate your aircraft and what will be the value of C M naught required. We know that weight of aircraft is 6 kg and velocity is 18 meters per second cruise velocity. So, using formula C L equals to under root of 2 W upon rho S V square, we can calculate the value of C L trim, which is 2 into 6 into 9.81 divided by this is at sea level, we are talking about this aircraft at sea level into area we got as 0 0.6875 into V is 18 square, which will come about 0 0.657. So, I want to operate at 0 0.657. Now, if you want to change change this value, you have to go for another set of, this is the value I got for CL trim. 
there can be different cases for which the CL trim can be different. For instance, you can operate at CL equals to minimum drag that is CL equals to CD naught upon K, where you can calculate CD naught you can assume at something 0 0.03 to 0 0.04. K you can calculate and you will get some CL trim at minimum drag. Static margin is static margin is given by DCM by DCL or slope of DCM by DCL equals to minus of static margin. We know that from previous lecture and various lectures before which you have done. So, C m versus C l graph if we if we plot this is minus static margin and in order to operate at point 0 0.657 what will be the value of C m naught this is at C l equals to 0. This I have to calculate what will the value of C m naught in order to trim my aircraft at point 0.657. So, let us assume I want a static margin of 15 percent. You can take any static margin 10, 15, 20 whatever you like. I have selected 15 percent as my static margin. So, we know that in order for an aircraft to be statically stable, your slope of C m versus alpha or slope of C m versus C l should be negative as well as C m naught should be a positive number. But these two have different cases here. This C m naught is at alpha equals 0, here this C m naught is at C l equals to 0. So, I will be doing all my calculations at alpha equals to 0. So, in th this case your C l will this uh, the value of C m naught will be not for C l equals to 0, but at some value of C l naught. So, this is the value of C m naught I will be using for further calculations. We have now in what will be the my C m naught requirement as per C, L C m versus C l graph. I have to calculate C m naught at C l naught value. So, first of all we have to calculate what will be the value of C l naught which is equal to C L alpha of wing which I have already calculated and angle of attack at 0 lift which we got from Aplar E197 airfoil which is for E197 C L alpha wing was 4.94 into alpha at 0 lift was 2 point minus 2 point we have taken modulus which will be 4.94 into 2.75. This is in degree we have to convert it into radian. So, I will divide it by 57.3 which will give me C L naught as 0.237. So, I have to calculate what will be my required C m naught at C l equals to 0 0.237. We have seen from the graph that my C l trim position was 0 0.657 C l versus C m. I have to calculate my value at 0. 237 and I also know that this is minus 0.15 minus of static margin. So, I can easily get this position simply I have to do is 0 0.657 minus 0 0.237 into 0 0.15 which will give 0 0.063. So, in order to get a static margin of 15 percent at C L trim of 0.657, I have to get overall air oh, C M naught of overall aircraft as 0 0.063. So, I 
So, now we will see what will be the required condition, what will be the tail setting angle, whether we even require a tail setting angle or not based on these calculations. So, this is the C m naught required. Now, step 7, C g your C m naught of wing, C m naught of tail. Now, earlier we derived what was the position of aerodynamic center with, with respect to wing horizontal line. This was a horizontal line and we derived as this was 0 0.1207. As we have already seen in previous lecture, in order to have static stability, your C g should be behind A c. This is your tail. This is your tail. Your A c C g should be behind of A c. Okay. So, for a fixed wing UAV, we use a lithium polymer battery. So, your mass does not vary with uh, during flight. So, we can assume C g is fixed in case of UAVs. But in case of jet, uh, during flight, your consumption of fuel, your C g might change. So, you have to consider a range of C g for which you have to do this calculation. But in our UAV, we do not have to worry about that since C g does not vary. So, first of all, let me take C g as 0 0.185 meters from wing horizontal position. Zero point one eight five meters. You can change this CG and see what will be your result or what will be the tail setting angle. This is just for my calculation. I have selected point one eight five meters. Okay, uh, we derived that this was a requirement in order to have static margin of fifteen percent at CL trim equals to point six five seven. So C M not for an aircraft or required was. 0 0.063, which is a combination of C m naught of wing plus C m naught of fuselage plus C m naught of tail. For simplicity or in our or for in our case, we will neglect this value. So, this will be the combination of C m naught of wing plus C m naught of tail equals to C m naught of aircraft. Now, C m naught of wing is equal to C m a c plus C l naught of wing into x C g minus x a c by C bar. We have already, uh, we already know what is the value of C m a c from air file data which was minus 0 0.07. We calculated C L naught wing as 0 0.2, 0 0.237 x C G we have selected as 0 0.185 and x A C we calculated was 0 0.127 and C bar was 0 0.279 which will give C m naught of wing s minus 0 0.0154. Once, once we get the value of C m, C m naught of wing, we can subtract that from total C m naught required for the aircraft, which is C m naught of aircraft equals to C m naught of wing plus C m naught of tail. This was 0 0.063 equals to we got 0 0.0154 plus C m naught of tail. So, C m naught of tail will be 0 0.063 
plus 0 0.0154 which will be equal to 0 0.074. So, this is a value I have to generate in order to get total CM naught of aircraft as 0 0.063. We have already seen the formula for C m naught of t, uh, C m naught of t is given as eta V h C l alpha t into epsilon naught plus incidence angle of wing minus incidence angle of tail. For our calculations, we are taking V h equals to 0.7. Typical range is 0 0.5 to 0 0.9, we are taking 0 0.7. So, we know V h equals to L t tail arm into S t area of tail by area of wing into C bar we already know area of tail, we already know area of wing, we know mean anatomy cords. So, we can go get tail tail arm which is equal to L t equals to 0 0.7 into S c bar by S t equals to 0 0.7 into 0 0.6. 0 0.6875 into 0 0.279 divided by 0 0.14, which will give me 0 0.959 meters. So, we got your tail arm as 0 0.959. So, this is this is your AC this is your CG and this is your tail. So, distance between CG and atomic center of tail is 0 0.959 meters. Now, to calculate CM uh, what will be the ten tail incidence angle in order to get C m naught t equals to 0 0.0784. So, C m naught of tail equals to let us assume eta as 1 into 0 0.7 C l alpha of tail we have already calculated this is C l alpha of tail 4.21. And then epsilon naught plus i of wing minus i of tail. Epsilon naught is given as 2 C L naught of wing by pi aspect ratio, which is equal to 2 into 0.236 by pi into 9.09, which comes around 0 0.0166. Now, substituting all these values in the equation, C m naught of tail equals to 1 into 0 0.7 into 4.0 1 into 0 0.0166 plus i w minus i t. I am not giving any incidence angle to wings, so I will take this value as 0 and C m naught of tail uh, required was 0 0.0784 equals to 1 into 0 0.24.2, 1 into 0 0.0166 minus i of t, which will give me 
i of t equals to 0 0.01 radian or something about 0 0.53 degrees. So, this is the value of tail incidence angle we need to have in order to get total C m naught of aircraft equals to 0 0.063 and static margin of 15 percent at C L trim equals to 0 0.657. We have to calculate neutral point. So, neutral point is given as x n p bar equals to x a c bar minus c m alpha of fuselage divided by c m alpha of wing plus eta v h c l alpha of tail by c l alpha of wing into 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha. Now, d epsilon by d alpha is given by 2 C L alpha of wing by pi aspect ratio equals to 2 into 4.94 divided by pi into 9.09 .09, which will be 0 0.346 and C m alpha of fuselage we are taking it as 0 for a time being. So, my final equation will be x n p bar equals to x a c bar plus eta we are taking 1, v h we have already taken as 0 0.7, C l alpha tail we have taken 4.21. C L alpha of wing is 4.94 into 1 minus 0 0.346, which will be equal to 0 0.1207. This is the value of A C divided by your C bar, which is 0 0.279 plus Zero point three nine zero one x n p bar. So x n p bar will be zero point four three two six plus zero point three nine zero one, which will be zero point eight two two seven. Your x n p bar. If you want to calculate the static margin using formula, static margin equals to x n p minus x c g bar. Once you get this neutral point, you can verify whether my static margin which I initially, uh, initially approximated is correct or not. So, you can substitute these values in this equation and you will be getting something point one five. 9, which is 15.9 percent, which is fair enough, since we have taken lots of approximations. So, this is determine what will be your tail arm length, what will be your incidence angle, where should be your wing and tail located. Uh, I want that you should practice first varying di at different CGs and what at different CL trim conditions. Since I took C L trim at 2 w upon rho s v square. You can take C L trim at minimum drag that is I already told C D naught by k or at minimum power 3 C D naught by k. Try this and you can formulate what will be the conditions or what will be the tail setting angle. So, that is all for this numerical. Thank you.